Hey guys, Retro Repress here, and today I'm going to show you how you can convert OVA files to VHDX files. Now, OVA files are usually virtual machine files for either VirtualBox or VMware, and if you tried to use them natively in Hyper-V, they would not work, but if we convert it over to a VHDX file, then it should be able to actually load it up. So for the conversion, we're going to need some sort of archive opener. So I'm just going to be using 7-zip, but you can use, say, 7-zip or WinRAR or something else. And then we're going to need QEMU. So I already have 7-zip installed, but I don't have QEMU installed yet. So we're just going to come to here and we're going to go to downloads. And then I'm on Windows, so I'm going to select Windows. And then I'm going to click on the 64-bit version. And then we will just select the installer for Windows 64-bit. And there we go, now the installer is downloaded, we will just open it up, and then we will just go through the wizard, and we will let it install in the default location. And there we go, now it's finished installing, we can now click finish, and we now just want to go to the install location. So by default, if you come to your C drive, and then come into program files, and then find QEMU, and then inside of that folder, if you scroll down, you want to find QEMU-IMG.exe. So this is the application that we're going to be using to convert the OVA file to a VHDX. So we will just minimize the file explorer for the minute. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select our OVA file and then I will shift and right click on it. And then I will come to 7-zip and I will open the archive. Then I will just select all of the contents of the archive and I will just extract them. So there we go. So as you can see inside of the OVA there is an M file an OVF, and then this OVA contains two VMDKs. So the VMDKs are what we're going to be converting over to VHDX files. Now if you have more than one like I do here, you first just want to open up the OVF file in either Notepad or Notepad++. I'm going to use Notepad++ as that works better. And then you just want to look in the disk selection section. So if you have multiple VMDK files but only one disk listed, then that means that the VMDKs inside of your OVA have likely been split up due to file size limitations and before you can convert them over, you're first going to need to look at how to merge the VMDKs into a single one with QEMU-IMG. Now if like in my case, where it lists more than one disk here, so it lists a disk for each of the VMDK files, these can just be converted over both separately, so we will end up with two VHDX files. So now I've gone over that, we can now get on with converting both of these VHDK files. So if we open up our file explorer again, and we just want to get the directory location of QEMU, so if inside of it we click in the directory bar, and then we just copy the directory location, and then we come to start and we type CMD, and we open command prompt up, and then we just do CD for current directory, then space, and then paste the directory location and press enter. So now we're inside of the QEMU directory. We can now just type QEMU-IMG.exe just to tell it to use the QEMU IMG application. And now we need to do space, then convert, then space dash F for format. Then we're gonna do VMDK for the format that we're converting. Then we're gonna do dash and then capital O for output, then we're going to do space VHDX, as that is the output file type that we want. And then we're going to do a speech mark, and we now need to get the directory location of where the VMDK that we want to convert is located. So mine are on the desktop, so I'll just quickly get my desktop directory location. So if I paste that there, and then I need to do backslash, and then get the full file name of the VMDK that we want to convert. And there we go, so if I now paste that onto the end, so that is the directory location with the full file name and the file type on the end, and then we just need to close that with a speech mark. So now we just need to do space, and we now need to put our output directory for the converted file. So I'm just going to tell it to put it on the desktop, and then I will do backslash, and then we just need to type the name of the output file, so I will just call it main dot and then vhdx for the file type and then close it with another speech mark. So now if I hit enter, it will now start converting the VMDK over to a VHDX. And there we go, now it's finished running the command, it has now converted this VMDK over to this VHDX. Now I will just do the same again for the secondary VMDK that I have. So if I just bring the command up again, and I will change the output file to secondary, and then I just need to change the input file name. So let's just make sure that is the same, so I'll just remove that and repaste that in. And if I press enter again, it will now convert it. 
and because this is a much smaller VMDK, that has converted it straight away. Now in my case, VMDK1 is much larger and is the main disk, so that is what we're going to be loading in Hyper-V, and then we would just need to attach this on as a secondary disk. Now hopefully if you try to load your VHDX file in Hyper-V, it will hopefully launch. Now if it comes up to you complaining about it being not sparse, I have done a video on how to convert it to sparse, so you can use that. Now the biggest problem that you will likely run into when converting VMs like this is that the VM probably will not have the correct video drivers to work with Hyper-V as the VM wasn't originally intended to be running within Hyper-V. Now if the VM that you have is Linux based, I'm going to be doing a video on how to get the display drivers to work on that, so there will likely be a video on that. But guys, hopefully that helps you convert your OVA files over to VHDX. If you like the video, don't forget the like button. If you dislike to hit the dislike button. Subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you another time. Bye.